Here we are in Salt Lake City, Utah. And there's the mountains. Not much snow yet, but it's coming. One of my latest projects, revamping my brash burger bucket, fiberglass bucket. As you can see, I kind of modified it a little bit with the decals. Problem with this bucket, it's fragile and it's expensive. And I learned how to do fiberglass work in the meantime to keep it going. And normally what happens if you wipe out pretty bad, oftentimes you chip out this piece or you rip out this piece and you get stress fractures right along in here. Or you blow out the bolt holes. And it's an easy fix. It's just uh, fiberglass work is very tedious and it takes time and patience and it's messy. So I finally discovered Aspen seating and got to me just the seat itself and I modified it. I uh, have paralysis below my knees so I have my core strength. I used uh, a heat gun to flare this back so I don't jam my back when I take a jump and, and land towards the rear of my bucket. I made a little relief hole and flared the seat for more comfort and I drilled the holes and with the top and bottom portion of the bucket was $300 just as a, a raw bucket and I just worked on it and it's very durable it's flexible so as my ass gets bigger over the years it's gonna flex I don't have to buy a new bucket or I can use the heat gun and manipulate the plastic I put in a, a plastic or a foam pad in the back for comfort and I don't have a foam seat because I don't really need it but I, I might put a, a real thin layer on the bottom just to keep the moisture out because it likes to collect back there and uh, the problem with the brash burger and probably with many other seat siskis is that your focus point or focal point is right there and you can see the frame is bent and that's from taking jumps and hucking my 225 pound body plus and uh, landing pretty hard on the cusp of a landing area at times knuckling the landing you can see here we got stress fractures stress fractures and then more fractures there uh, when I do uh, an endo type landing and jam the, the foot rest but I have to say I bought this in 2008 it's very durable I've overcome the problem with the load mechanism sticking in the up position by uh, putting this strap on where when I'm on the lift you can see it's in the upright position when I'm on the lift and the tension's off with the pressure's off I just pull this strap and it locks into position well it doesn't lock you don't want it to lock but it collapses so when I get off the lift I am uh, ready to ski I just have to push this lever back and you can see where it's locked into place you don't want to have this locked into place while riding the lift up because or getting the lock position because getting off the lift it can collapse and the bottom of the chair will be sitting right between here and here and you're going to be going around the bull, bull wheel trapped Kind of like a mouse trap you can't get off until you release this and you can see you're free so when you get off the lift before you get off the lift make sure this is in the release position and when you get in the landing area of course the siski will collapse naturally and you can just lock it in position 
like that and ski on. Very simple design. Very, very, very strong considering what I do with it. And uh, this plastic durable seat, it's bomber. It's not gonna chip or break. Not in my lifetime. And uh, every sit ski is different. Every person and body is different. Everybody has their special adaptation. But uh, this is my madness in the wintertime. And what I'll do probably today is grind these screws down a little bit so it's less to get caught up on the chairlift. And uh, that's basically it. Very, very simple design, but yet very effective. And with that, we need more of that. <laughs>